Hi everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz and I thought it would be fun today to get cozy with some crochet mug warmers. As always, there are timestamps below and be sure to check out on the sort of the fast forward line so you can skip right there as well to your point of interest. In this video, we're going to be making a sunflower, a pumpkin jack-o-lantern, and of course, a black cat. To get started on this project, I used a 3.75 millimeter hook with Stylecraft Special DK yarn. If you can't find Stylecraft, then any sport weight will do, or a light worsted weight. Both work perfectly fine. Along with your yarn and your hook, you're going to need a cup. I just got this one at Walmart. I really like the shape of it. I like the feel of the handle. It was very inexpensive and it had this subtle but pretty little decorative border on the top, which is ideal, especially if you're doing it as a gift. Before we get on to the specific patterns, I just wanted to explain a little bit about the bodies of each of these. Uh, because they're all the same. I used half double crochet stitches for this. Uh, that is a US term. If you're needing the UK terminology, it is in the description box below. Uh, I'll show you how to measure your cup, but for my cup, I ended up doing 27 rows uh, wrapping around the cup. I used the shorter side to build, and so that made the stitches vertical to the eye. If you want your stitches to be horizontal, then of course you'll measure it a little bit differently. And I'll show you that here in just a moment. The width of these were all a little bit different, but that was just because each one I had to make sure that the pieces were not going over the cup's lip. And I'll go into more detail there with each pattern. Okay, so now it's time to choose your cup, and I would suggest that you find one that doesn't taper too much at the bottom. This one is fine because the main portion of the body is in the center here, and that's pretty straight. If you get one that's very tapered, you're going to have to do some increases. You wouldn't need to do one with this slight, slight uh, tapering that's happening on this cup. And then at this point, you want to take a tape measure or a piece of yarn and measure the circumference of your cup to see how long it is around. I would go just to uh, about an inch. I would just, I would not go under the cup handle. I would just make sure that it just, it has about of an inch gap here because your yarn is going to stretch. You're going to be making a little holder or piece that keeps things in place here on the top and the bottom. You're also going to want to measure the height of your cup to establish where you want uh, your pattern to stop and start. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the same chain count that I used for the cat and for the pumpkin. This was a chain of 10. One, two, three, 10. Now add two. This is going to be your turning chain. For whatever chain count you've chosen, add two. Now for your half double crochet, you're going to now go into the third chain from your hook, yarn over, go into that third chain, yarn over, pull through all three. That is your first half double. Now just continue on all the way down. Coming up to the last one. Okay, and just make double sure that you've done your count correctly. I ended up with 10, that's correct. Go ahead and chain up two, one, two. Turn your work. This is not going to count as your first half double crochet. We're going to work into that same stitch right there in the beginning. This is just counting as your turn. I find that it makes it a little bit more straight for me. And continue on. Coming up to the last two. One and two. Sometimes it's a little tricky at the end to make sure that you've gotten into the correct stitch. So I find it's easy just to double check on myself. It's a short row here, and that's again why I prefer to do the height 
because I find it a lot easier than dealing with the longer chain to keep my count accurate. And you're good to go. Just keep doing that for 27 rounds if you're following this tutorial or whatever uh, length you need to get all the way around your cup. Great, and then when you're done with all of your rows, you should have something that looks like this if you did it with the vertical uh, measurement like I did here. Go ahead and test. And this is perfect. My chain attachment is a chain of three. Uh, I think that's pretty standard. Four, you may want to go with four. I was going between three and four and settled with uh, three. But again, this will really vary depending on the yarn you're using and your cup. Okay, before we get started, let me explain what I'm going to do and then I'll show you. I'm going to go down to the second chain. I'm not going to start at the top. I'm going to go down to the second chain and fasten on. I'm going to chain three, fasten on to the opposite side, slip stitch, do single crochets into those chains, and then slip stitch at the top here. And I'm going to do that for both sides. Okay, one, two, going into both loops of that chain, fasten on, one, two, three, going into the second chain, slip stitch, slip stitch into the next chain, okay, and you should have something that looks like this. Now I'm going to single crochet into those three chains. One, two, three, and now I'm going to slip stitch into that top portion there. And it's complete. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give myself a pretty long tail and I'm going to go back and forth in this to make this even more secure by tightening up these little gaps just to make it get really taut and tight. And do the same thing on the other side. Just flip it over, fasten into the second loop, chain three, slip stitch into the second, slip stitch into the first, single crochet into those chains, and then do a slip stitch to secure and use the extra tail to make it even more secure and you are good to go. Okay, we're working on the sunflower here and the specifics on this, this is 27 rows of half double crochets. I went ahead and joined at the top and the bottom with a chain three. To see how to do this, please refer back in the uh, timeline where I show how to attach the sides. Once you've completed that, then it's time to just go ahead and do a single crochet in the top of every single stitch here. So that would be, if you were doing mine, you would end up with 27 single crochets plus the three uh, here at the top, so you'd have about 30. To work on the center of the sunflower, I'm going to use a lighter brown for this uh, tutorial, just so it's easier to see. We're going to start with a magic circle. Once you're ready with your magic circle, go ahead and chain three. I have a chain already with the security of the magic circle, so I'm gonna count that as my first one and do two more. One, two, 
that's three that is going to serve as a double crochet and now we're going to do 11 double crochets to make a total of 12. two twelve go ahead and tighten slip stitch into the top of the first chain three work a double crochet into the same stitch that you created your chain three this will be row two and it is the first uh, increase of two double crochets in the same stitch and you're going to do that all the way around you're just doubling your circle here or your center by doing two double crochets in each stitch around and 24 make sure you have 24 before you go into the round three and we're nearly there okay round three we're going to make little loops all the way around the edge this is going to be where we attach our petals go ahead and chain two one two skip the chain next to this chain two and slip stitch into the chain right after chain two skip the next chain go into the chain after you're going to be doing a chain two and slip stitching into every other chain all the way around two skip move into the next and i'll see you on the other side so now it's time to join our petals or create our petals and we're going to slip stitch into any chain two loop here join with a slip stitch so we're going to start with a chain two we're going to do a treble crochet chain one another treble chain two and in that same original chain that we secured into go ahead and do another slip stitch to finish your petal okay we're going to slip stitch into the next loop and we're going to repeat chain two treble chain one another treble chain two and slip stitch into the same space to complete your petal slip stitch into the next loop and you're going to continue all the way around repeating this process double check that you have 12 before you completely finish and I'm going to finish. I have one slip stitch left to finish this last petal. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the original petal and call it done. And at this point, you can just go ahead and fasten off. And weave. Okay, I'm not going to weave it in right now, but let's pretend it's weaved in. You're going to take these longer pieces of the center here and find your 
cover your warmer with your base and it's time to decide where you want to attach it on the sleeve here. So I would suggest that you put it back on your cup and then you can kind of hold it and start eyeballing where you want it to go. And then it's very simple here. You can just go ahead and start uh, darning it on, just attaching to the base here with your uh, darning needle, your tapestry needle. Let me see if I can show you on the finished one here. You can't even really see. I left all of this unattached. If you want it to stay down more secure, I would take your yellow and you could do that just here around the, the base of it. And I don't really have much to show. I went through a couple of times here, but not too much. Really, really simple. We are getting ready to work on Mr. Jack-O-Lantern here. And just like the other pieces, we are working with 27 rows of half double crochets and then joining with chain, a chain of three. To see specifically how to do this, you can check back in the timeline to the portion that says attaching sides. And there's also specifics on the count for this and measuring in the beginning of the video. Now with this pattern, this is the only one in the three that I've done here that you really do need to pay attention to your counting if you are not following along exactly with this cup size. You want to make sure with this scallop that you make your base here a multiple of three. This is because we're going to be needing three chains up above to work the scalloped edge. So after you've measured your cup and determined your size, just try your best to get, you know, as close to that measurement in a multiple of three so that you can do this scallop very easily. Okay, so before we get started on the scalloped edge here, I just want to say that you can work directly into these stitches here and, and start immediately on your scalloped edge. That's, there's no problem with that. But if you're finding that it's a little bit difficult to see where to put your stitches, you can go ahead and do a single crochet in every stitch to make a, ni a nice neat area to join your scallop. And that's what I'm going to do here very quickly. I'm just going to go ahead and single crochet into the top of each stitch. And mine is 27 rows plus the three chains for the attachment here. So I need to do 30 chains all the way around or 30 single crochets all the way around. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Just do your best to kind of eyeball this. As long as you get the count right, it really doesn't matter where you decide to put your single crochets. It'll look great. Okay, so I've gone all the way around with a single crochet and I have 30 single crochets and now I'm ready to start my scallop. And like I said before, you don't have to do that. I just think it gives a nice easy visual to work into for this. Also, if you want, you can do the same thing on the bottom of your piece. That's very nice. I did do that on the sunflower here and it worked out really nicely. If you decided not to do the single crochet, just fasten on wherever you want. And we're going to start doing the scallops now. And what you want to start with is just a slip stitch. So just fasten on however you like best. Once you've fastened on, now you're going to focus on the next three chains. So these ones, one, two, three. In the first one we've slip stitched. Now we're going to go into the second one with three half double crochets. One, two, and three. Slip stitch into the next chain. And that is your first scallop completed. In the next chain, half double crochets three half double crochets. Slip stitch into the next and just continue all the way around. 
Okay, and now we're ready to work on the next row of scallops in the green, and it's super easy. We're just going to slip stitch into the second half double crochet in our three half doubles for this scallop here. One, two. That is going to serve as our first slip stitch. And now we're going to do our three half doubles into the space between the scallops from the previous row. One, two, and three. Slip stitch into the second chain or the second half double in your scallop. and repeat. And just do this all the way around and then just slip stitch into the first uh, slip stitch that you did here. We're getting ready to work on the eyes and the mouth now, and we're going to start with the eyes quickly. This is very simple. I start with a chain of four. One, two, three, four. In the second chain from the hook, I start with a single crochet. I repeat all the way down, put another single crochet in the next chain and then a single crochet in the final chain. Chain one. We're going to reduce now. We're not going to go into that initial stitch. We're going to skip that. We want to finish with two single crochets. So we go into the second stitch, one, and then in the next, chain one. And now we want to finish with just one more. We're going to skip and we're going to go into that final single crochet. And there is your eye. Now what I like to do is I like to give myself a long tail. You can go around, whoop, you can go around the edge with single crochets if you want to make your shape more pronounced. If you do that, uh, you have three rows here. So I would do a single crochet, single crochet, and then a third, and then I would probably do a chain to get that corner, and then do three single crochets, a chain, and then three single crochets. I didn't bother with this. I just went and fastened off, giving myself a long tail. And then I use these tails to help me uh, shape the eye a little bit more. Like for instance, here, I'm going to take that in and tighten it. And then I'll use this to actually attach to the piece. And as you can see here, I just kind of shaped it as I went and just use that to kind of help me with that. And finally, we're going to work on the mouth. And it's very simple. We're going to be doing it with surface crochet. If you are not a fan of surface crochet, then a tapestry needle and just stitching on the mouth works just as well. But I do want to show you the surface crochet in case you want to do the same as what you see. Again, I'm using a charcoal here. Hopefully it will show well on camera. Start with a slip knot. And then once you have your slip knot, remove it and then pick the side. I like to work, I'm right-handed, so I'm working from right to left. If you're left-handed, you'd be working from left to right. What we're going to be doing is right here, this main piece. At the end, I made sure I left a nice long tail on both sides and I just took a tapestry needle to make the little curves of the mouth. But what we're doing with the surface crocheting is right here. And once you've decided where you want to begin, go ahead and insert your hook. Put your loop back onto your hook and pull it through. Try your best to keep the knot in the back of your work. Now your tail may want to get in the way here, just if you can, just try to keep it, uh, hold on to it with your finger or you're going to get really moody with that quickly. I know I do. Okay, and 
begin by pulling through your loop. Try to work a little bit loosely. It's easy to get very tight with this. Can you see I'm just going through and pulling? Staying relaxed is the key to this technique. There we go. And then once you decide you've got your length here, then you can start playing around with it. It's kind of fun to just sort of maybe even draw the design you want ahead of time and follow that. Or just freeform it. Or is it freestyle? You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah? Okay, and then like I said, I take the tail at the end and I use that with on a tapestry needle to make the little smile on the sides. We're getting ready to work on the cat now and the cat's body or the base of the cozy here is 27 rows of half double crochets. The beginning I began on the sides here so I could work my way around and I started with a chain of 10 plus 2 to take into account the turning chain. Now I didn't go much bigger than that because I wanted to make sure that the ears did not go over the cup and that is why it's a little bit shorter than the others. Okay so let's go ahead and get started. We'll work on the ears first. When I did my ears, I decided to actually attach them to the cozy and build them, and you may prefer that as well. If you do decide to do it that way, I would suggest that you put your cozy onto your mug and decide where your ears want to be. This is really important because you want to make sure uh, that the, the person drinking from the cup, you want to make sure that their lip is not going to keep uh, touching the ears. So go ahead and fasten on. chain one, single crochet into the next stitch, two, into the next, three, and four. Okay, of course it won't be matching, it would be black on black so you wouldn't see any of this. Chain one and turn single crochet, single crochet, single crochet. Remember you skip that first chain to um, decrease because you want to be finishing with three to start working your way up to your point. Chain one, and now we're going to want two. Skip that first space here, and you're going to go into the second. One, and two. Chain one, turn. We want to skip that first space and go into that next single. And there we go, we have our ear completed. Give yourself a nice long tail and then you can use your tail to just help tighten these little spaces here just to make them a little bit more defined. And again, if you want, you can go around, take another piece of yarn and go around and do single crochets around the edge if you want to do that. And there we go. And I thought I was recording, but it looks like I'd paused. I took the beginning tail as well and I used it. I had a little gap here and I just used it to just pull that together uh, just to give the ear a little bit more definition. It really does the trick and it feels pretty solid. So I think you'll be happy with that. And then once you have your ear finished, I think it's fun to just, you can omit this part, but I wanted to give a little bit of pink or some color to just contrast with the black. And so I just grabbed some pink and added it to my tapestry needle. And then I just go back and forth. I don't tie anything in at this point. 
because the reason I don't tie anything in is because, you know, I'm not perfect at this, so I may decide that it doesn't look good and then I just pull it apart and redo it. But I just go back and forth creating little lines and work my way up to the top. And then when I'm finished, I just do a few passes underneath and then fasten off. And let me show you the back here. To get started, we're going to do a magic circle. If you don't like doing magic circles, you can do a chain three or chain four, secure with a slip stitch. And then when we start working single crochets, just make sure to incorporate that tail and then you can cinch it closed very tight. If this doesn't make sense, go ahead and check out my video about the magic tail. I call it the magic tail. I'll put that in the description box below. And it's a really cool hack if you just don't like doing the magic ring or magic circle. Either way, when you're ready, let's do six single crochets. One, two, five, and six. Tighten, put a slip stitch in the chain of your first single crochet, and go ahead and fasten off. You don't need to worry about a long tail for this. You can go ahead and weave that in because we're going to be using the black of the eye to attach it to the cozy. Okay, now we're ready to attach our eyes to the cozy. This is fun, just placing it and seeing where you like your eye and where you want it to be on the face. Kind of picture where you want the nose to go as well. And then I just take some black on a tapestry needle working into the center okay I go through to secure let me just twist around here real quick okay and then I come up on the other side. And I go through the center one more time. And once I've done that to secure the eye to the cozy, now I just go back and forth several times to build the shape of the eye. And this is really a personal preference on how thick or thin you want the iris to be. And then you can start playing with it, shaping it. Okay, so you get the idea, right? And then at this point, once I have that done, I get a little bit of white and I just find a spot sort of about three quarters away from the center or a quarter in on the far end and just add a little spark of white. Let's see, I don't want to, there we go. And don't pull too, too tight because you don't want it to disappear. If it does disappear on you, then just pull it back out. And then I'll go in and just go in beneath here and darn that in. And what I like to do with the eyes, if I've done the top right corner of one eye, I go and I do the top left corner of the other eye. And then I finish off with the nose. Once I have the eyes in place, then I can do the nose. And as you can see, I did the same kind of uh, technique that I used for the ears and for the eye. And I just do one, two, three passes and then a little one for the 
little space here. And you could always add a little smile if you like. Anything works. Anything goes with this. Thanks for stopping by and playing hooky with me, you guys. It was a lot of fun. See you soon. Bye.